I'm Christine Curcio, and my topic today is histology of the macula in health, aging, and in AMD. AMD is a vascular metabolic disease in which extracellular deposits, soft drusen and subretinal drusenoid deposit, increase risk for progression to atrophy and neovascularization. In the RPE Brooks membrane complex, AMD involves an atherosclerosis-like progression instigated by lipid recycling pathways serving retinal physiology. A timeline of AMD progression is visible through histologically validated clinical imaging. We begin with biology and aging of the macula, focusing on the cells, layers, and regions, and the unique neuroglial relationships that are supported by the RPE choroid. A neurovascular unit includes all the neurons, glia, and vascular cells that couple blood flow to the metabolic demands of the neurons. The outer retinal neurovascular unit comprises the RPE and choroid, which together support the photoreceptors and neural cells that evolved for high acuity vision. The human retina comprises 21 layers and clinically relevant spaces. These layers contain the photoreceptors and the Mueller glia, the RPE, and the choroid. The spaces are between the photoreceptors and the RPE, that is the subretinal space, and between the RPE basal lamina and the intercollagenous layer of Brooks membrane. The retina has at least 60 neuronal cell types plus glia. We will attend to just these the rod and cone photoreceptors, the Mueller glia, the RPE, and the choreocapillary endothelium. Vision starts in the outer segments of the photoreceptors, and information transfers inwardly through the cell bodies in the outer nuclear layer and the synapses in the outer plexiform layer. Neurobiology defines the macula as an area with a continuous layer of ganglion cells in the inner retina. It is 6 millimeters in diameter and contains a cone-only fovea surrounded by a rod-dominated do perifovea. The same area is encompassed by the ETDRS grid that is used for grading color fundus photographs. Many people treat the fovea and the macula as equivalent, and they are definitely not. We mapped the human retina using whole mounds like those on the last slide to accurately represent phototopography over the entire retina, building on prior smaller studies. We learned that the human retina is rod dominated, 20 to 1 rod to cone ratio, even in the macula, where it is 9 to 1 in the young adult. The cone only foveola is 0.8 millimeters in diameter. We found more cones in the nasal retina on the left side of each map. Rods were numerous in an elliptical rod ring that swings out around the optic nerve head, which is in black, with a hot spot in superior retina. Importantly, the six millimeter diameter macula is less than 3% of total retinal area, which impacts the design of our experimental studies. It takes a macula to support the fovea. And here I want to highlight the Henle fiber layer. The ganglion cells that transmit parallel pathways of information from the cone photoreceptors to the brain are very numerous. And the photoreceptors project laterally to the bipolar interneurons so that all the cells can be fit in around the foveal pit. In a Golgi stain, these inner fibers of cones rods, and Mueller cells, which are interleaved, can be up to 600 microns long, and the photoreceptors have unique electrical properties. In this flat mount of a monkey retina, we can see the individual Henle fibers uh, across the entire macula. The Henle fiber layer is visible in OCT with directional lights and it consists of 14% of the total macular thickness.
in the Henle fiber layer is a strong signal for the yellow xanthophyll pigment lutein and zeaxanthin, which are replenished from the diet and are part of the ARIDS-2 formulation recommended for AMD patients. Recent data strongly suggest that these pigments reside in the Mueller cells. First of all, the distribution of the macular pigment matches well the morphology of individual Mueller cells. Second, in a disease called MACTEL2, there's loss of both the macular pigment um, and degeneration of the Mueller cells. And third, it's uh, Mueller cell markers and xanthophyll pigments are found in surgically excised tissue from the macula. The RPE serves the photoreceptors and the choroid in at least 14 ways and still counting. The RPE shown here is a single layer of a cuboidal epithelium. It maintains the blood retina barrier via the junctional complexes. It's responsible for the phagocytosis of photoreceptor outer segments. It aligns the outer segments with the apical processes. It transfers nutrients and retinoids to the photoreceptors. It's responsible for vitamin A metabolism, ionic balance, outward fluid flow, which maintains the attachment of the retina to the RPE. The RPE secretes interphotoreceptor matrix, which also maintains attachment. The melanin pigment absorbs stray light. The cells coordinate cytokines, induce and maintain capillaris by way of vascular endothelial growth factor. It keeps retinal vessels away from the photoreceptors by way of pigment epithelium derived factor. It maintains extracellular matrix in Brooks membrane, that is the collagen laminin uh, by way of metal matrix metalloproteinases, and it removes waste. It secretes lipoproteins basolaterally through fatty acid and cholesterol disposal, uh, and this is the largest component of soft drusen. This graph reminds us that the largest risk factor for all forms of AMD is aging, as learned from population-based epidemiology studies that used color fundus photography, like sh shown on the right. Shown are the early form uh, with yellow spots called drusen and the atrophic and exudative end stages. Thus, we look to the aging eye for the major precursors of AMD. Going from layer to layer, we'll start with the photoreceptors. Using the accurate and unbiased cell count shown previously, we showed that rod topography here in a color-coded contour map in youngest and oldest adults, there is a clear diminution of rod density, which is best seen in the dif difference map on the right. The area of greatest loss, the dark blue and purple, forms an annulus directly adjacent to the cone-enriched fovea. In the same eyes, the cones are stable. In the flat mounts, uh, in an older eye, uh, any cell loss appears to have been filled in, uh, so there are no gaps. Uh, up until this point in time, it was known that both cone and rod function deteriorated in AMD, but the cones and rods had not been counted in the same well-preserved eyes. In the RPE, a prominent age change is the accumulation of lipofuscin. RPE lipofuscin starts as photoreceptor outer segment tips. These tips are internalized daily and bind with lysosomes to create long-lasting residual bodies. Every cell's lipofuscin composition is unique. And unlike neurons, Lipofuscin in RPE is less than 2% protein, and it's very rich in autofluorescent bisretinoid compounds, which are vitamin A derivatives. A2E is one particularly well-studied compound. 
Here is an example of autofluorescent lipofuscin and melanolipofuscin in a flat-mounted RPE. Using the same mapping methods as used for the photoreceptors, we showed that older eyes have more autofluorescence than younger eyes, and that RPE um, autofluorescence follows the topography of broad, broad photoreceptors, replicating a 1978 finding. Finally, the density of RPE cells here in the central retina does not change with age, despite the accumulation of lipofuscin, consistent with previous studies using fairly large samples to count cells alone. RPE is supported by Brooks membrane, uh, which is therefore a substrate in addition to being a vessel wall. Brooks membrane is usually thought of as a five-layer structure. The basal lamina of the RPE and choriocapillaris, the inner and outer collagenous layers with the elastic layer between at the yellow arrow. Brooks membrane's role in AMD is better understood if we think of only the middle three layers of Brooks proper and the RPE basal lamina as its own layer. The RPE basal lamina is the great dividing line of AMD. The neuroectoderm versus the mesodermal origin, basement membrane proteins versus structural collagen and elastin in the other layers. And the basal lamina importantly becomes basal laminar deposit, um, which adheres to the RPE, um, opening a cleavage plane for type 1 neovascularization. The basal laminar deposit is shown in the upper right hand. Uh, panel. So uh, because it thickens and attaches from the inner collagenous layer, um, uh, it, the, the, um, it creates the sub-RPE basal laminar space shown here, which has effects that are seen clinically. Importantly, drusen filled this space and no other. Shirley Sarks who performed the first major histological survey of AMD eyes, used thick, continuous basal laminar deposit, like that shown here, as a diagnostic criterion for AMD. We can now see it clinically in OCT. Brooks membrane is known to thicken with age. In this study of 95 donor eyes, it increased from 2 to 4 microns in thickness. And it acquires patches of calcification, shown here by a von Kossa stain and confirmed with microanalysis, and, ass and assessed using a semi-quantitative grading system. In the macula, drusen also increases with age. The two main types are hard, which have straight sides and solid contents, and soft, which have sloping sides and looser contents, and these may be confluent. Brooks membrane elastic layer does not change with age, but interestingly it is thicker in the periphery than in the macula, suggesting that it may have evolved to permit transport better in the macula, but also neovascularization can break through there. In Brooks membrane also are advanced glycation end products. These are non-enzymatic mallard reactions between a protein's primary amino groups and carbohydrate-derived aldehyde groups common throughout the body in the age. In 1990, a finding in normal human macula by Alan Bird uh, and uh, John Marshall and Daniel Polykoff uh, showed a huge new process that was ongoing in the adult eye. This showed deposition of oil red O binding neutral lipid in Brooks membrane that increased throughout adulthood. Oil red O stains esterified cholesterol, triglyceride, and free fatty acid. Other papers from that same era confirmed the age relatedness of the lipid deposition. John Marshall established the Brooks membrane choroid explant as a method to study the transport of materials and water across this lipid-rich barrier. 
Oil red O binding in drusen was arguably the first molecular constituent of drusen uh, identified by Farkas et al. in 1971. We used Philip and histochemistry to show that the oil red O binding lipid is a sterified cholesterol. It is confined to Brooks membrane, unlike other lipids identified histochemically, and it increases markedly with age, especially in the macula. This accumulation nicely matches the increased resistance to transport in Brooks membrane described by Marshall et al. The sterified cholesterol implies that lipoproteins are the source. This age effect caught my attention because lipids in Brooks membrane was a direct way to get from uh, physiology to drusen, while also linking to well-studied mechanisms, molecules, and clinical success in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. In human eyes prepared by quick freeze deep etch, we can see the dense collection of lipoprotein particles in aged Brooks membrane that form three basal linear deposit on the lower left. These particles accumulate over adulthood, especially in the macula, and they fuse and pool to form basal linear deposit in AMD. Our studies showed that these particles were lipoproteins rich in esterified cholesterol, the fatty acid linoleate, and they contained ApoB100, the principal protein of plasma VLDL and LDL but they also had very distinct composition and structure from plasma lipoproteins. We've, we've further showed that human RPE expressed both ApoB and microsomal triglyceride transfer protein, which is the a, a product of the A-beta lipoproteinemia gene, and it is required for lipoprotein assembly. This means that the RPE is a constitutive secretor of large lipoproteins, like the liver and the intestine. We and others showed that human, mouse, and rat RPE cell lines and explants secrete ApoB. <clears throat> Moving to the next layer, the Coria capillaris. In 1994, the group from Rotterdam published data from 95 donor eyes and measured Coria capillaris density. And this is the percent coverage of Brooks membrane by Coria capillaris a measure of exchange capacity, and they found that density declines with age, confirming an observation by the sex. More recently, Rob Mullins and his group have found that membrane attack complex, the terminal effector of the complement pathway, which is implicated in many genetic studies, focalizes to the Cori capillaris and Brooks membrane, starting in childhood, and increasing throughout adulthood, suggesting a molecular mechanism for choriocapillary endothelial cell death that also links to the genetic susceptibility to A and B. In the same 1994 study, the Rotterdam group reported thinning of the choroid. This is now visible through enhanced depth imaging, OCT, and has been reported by many groups. By the numbers, AMD is a vascular originating disease. In aging, the corocapillary endothelium decreases. The RPE is stable. <clears throat> Brooks membrane fill, fills with debris and lipids, and the rod photoreceptors decrease in number. We interpret this to mean that the RPE takes care of itself and supplies less to the photoreceptors over time. Using the lipids in Brooks membrane as a springboard, we learned a lot about AMD from the study of atherosclerosis. The two diseases, chronic diseases of aging, featuring calcific, inflammatory, and neovascular complications, toxically modified lipoprotein components in vessel walls, lipid-rich, biomechanically unstable extracellular lesions, that occur in stereotypic vascular locations. We start by lipoprotein binding to extracellular matrix in aging, and they involve uh, um, uh, the 
the age-related thickening of the subendothelial space, which here is Brooks membrane, the physical and chemical forms of cholesterol. We need lipoprotein particles as cholesterol sources, a, a cellular source for those particles, which is the liver and the intestine in atherosclerosis. Physiological needs driving lipoprotein production, which are in the eye are still a, a matter of hypothesis. We found that the RPE expresses genes and proteins uh, indicating that it is a constitutive secretor of large ApoB and E lipoproteins. And this world of interocular gene expression it can explain the dissociation of top-level biological risk factors for AMD and cardiovascular disease, such as the ApoE genotype and LDL levels, because there are inter there are pathways of intraocular cholesterol homeostasis in the eye. In 2009, we proposed on the basis of multiple evidence lines that soft is in form as a downstream consequence of dietary delivery of lipids to retina and the recycling of unneeded lipids by RPE to the chorea capillaris. In 2013, we proposed on the basis of histology that subretinal drusenoid deposits, which I will talk about momentarily, are plausibly part of the same system of outer retinal lipid recycling. Thus, soft drusen and sequelae could be imagined as an atherosclerosis-like progression in which excess lipids left over from the uptake of plasma lipoproteins and shed outer segments were recycled uh, via large ApoB and E-containing lipoproteins, which are retained in aging Brooks membrane. These lipids form a transport barrier and become oxidized, promoting uh, uh, inflammation and neovascularization. At least the Drusen part of this theory has received some experimental support. This slide shows primary RPE cells from a pig eye which are highly polarized and differentiated. We showed that primary RPE cells from the pig eye make continuous deposits if fed only the culture medium, depending on the source, uh, the surface that they are grown upon. This shows the diet is indeed important and that outer segments, which certainly contribute to deposits in vivo, are not required, consistent with the role of the ApoB system uh, being uh, driven by fatty acid uh, cycling. This shows that soft drusen form because the RPE is functional and clearance through the Brooks membrane chorea capillaris is impaired. One modified lipid that could contribute to inflammation and neovascularization is 7 keto cholesterol. This oxysterol can form from unesterified cholesterol by enzymatic or non-enzymatic means through the action of free radicals. Ignacio Rodriguez's lab showed that in non-human primate eyes, which also have lipids in Brooks membrane, RPE choroid, but not the lens or the retina, accumulate 7-keto cholesterol with age. This study had many eyes, preserved for assay shortly after that. Further, this compound was shown to be proangiogenic in vivo using a corneal microimplant assay. Let us examine the clinically relevant consequences, starting with drusen and type 1 neovascularization. The essential findings of Drew's heterogeneity, ultrastructure, and clinical significance were contributed by Shirley and John Sarks, two ophthalmologists in Australia, and Murray Killingsworth, their electron microscopist. These studies differentiated drusen from basal laminar deposit above and from the intercollagenous layer of Brooks membrane below and revealed the composition of soft drusen. Soft drusen and basal linear deposit are two forms, a lump and layer, of the same lipid-rich material between the RPE basal lamina and the inner collagenous layer of Brooks membrane. A large soft druse with lipid pools is shown on the top, and at higher magnification, a thin layer of basal linear deposit is shown in the bottom with the red arrows, 
and a thinner layer of pre-basal linear deposit with yellow arrows. These build up through a lifetime of lipoprotein. Soft rosin are distinct from hard in shape, as shown before, and in ultrastructure, shown here in a, a clinically documented specimens from the Sarks collection. And you can see the difference between the hard and soft rosin. Soft rosin confer high risk for progression. They tend to collect in central macula, which potentially ties them to fo foveal theology. Here we see transmission electron microscopy of what the Sarks called membranous debris, which is overwhelmingly the main component of soft rosin, shown here at higher magnification secretion. We used specific lipid histochemistry by Feldman to show that what the Sarks called uh, breaking up drusen were really pools of esterified cholesterol. Further, we used specific ultrastructural techniques to show that lipoprotein particles, lipoprotein-like particles, uh, tracked through the basal laminar deposit and it ended up in basal linear deposit. We can now recognize soft drusen on OCT using lesion reflectivity to classify various RPE elevations. RPE elevations can have a range of internal reflectivities, including medium homogeneous, representing soft drizzle, low homogeneous for serous or fluid-filled um, PEDs, and layers of reflectivity for fibrovascular PED. So soft drizzle can be followed, uh, informed by this prior histologic validation. In the next sequence, I will show the physical continuity between soft drusen and type 1 neovascularization. We begin with the Sark's ultrastructural demonstrations of a breach in Brooks, shown here, through which neovascular tissue travels. Next, we can see in one continuous long histology section a soft druse with an artifactual cleavage plane. A few hundred microns away is a breach in Brooks membrane through which neovascular tissue, complete with activated parasites, passes through. Between these two locations, there is sub-RPE basal laminar fluid, continuous with the druse and the exudative fluid from the neovascular membrane. Can the same series of images be conceived for subretinal drusenoid deposit, which I will call SDD? Over the years, this pattern biomicroscopic sign, shown here in color fundus photography, infrared reflectance, autofluorescence, and finally OCT, has been called many names depending on the investigators and the detection technology used. The names that have stuck are reticular pseudodrusen from the ONFOS view and subretinal drusenoid deposit, or SDD, in the cross-sectional view of OCT. The name that is preferred going forward is SDD because these deposits are neither universally reticular, they are real, not pseudo, and they are distinct from drusen. Here are the originally described three stages, and here our histology um, of a non-AMD case sh shows uh, in, an, in an intact retina an extracellular deposit anterior to the RPE. The story actually started in 1988 when John and Shirley Sarks illustrated but did not name these deposits in their electron microscopic study of geographic atrophy. Quoting them, the photoreceptor outer segments terminated in focal collections of membranous debris, which are partly surrounded by inward extensions of the RPE. 
Membranous debris was the Sarx's name for the main ultrastructural component of soft fusing, thus implying that both deposits were the same. This idea has since been refuted by two studies using lipid histochemistry. Soft have abundant lipids that bind oil red O and fill them for esterified cholesterol, which we attribute to the neutral lipid core of large APO B and E containing lipoproteins. The lipids in SDD do not stain for oil red O, and the filipin staining component is unesterified cholesterol only, which we attributed to very small lipoproteins or other lipid carrier molecules. In 2016, uh, Robin Geimer and Erica Fletcher published superlative histology of a surgically removed eye that was previously imaged by OCT. They showed correspondence of type 3 SDD with large solitary deposits. The deposits were strongly positive for vitronectin and could appear in the outer nuclear layer. Mueller cells it responded to even tiny deposits by upregulating glial fibrillary acidic protein. And microglia invaded from inner retina when the deposits got big enough. Recent laboratory research has differentiated SDD from Druzinin basilinia deposit. They have some proteins in common, but importantly differ in CD59 of the complement pathway. They differ in lipid composition. SDD has one cholesterol form, and drusen have two. The deposits differ in mineralization. None is detectable in SDD, and drusen commonly have hydroxyapatite spherules that are reflective in OCT. In topography, SDD follows that of rods, including abundance in the periphobia and out and around the optic nerve head, and soft drusen clinically in basal linear deposit histologically may follow the cones. The drusen are more specific for AMD, whereas SDD appears in several disorders, usually involving Brooks membrane dysfunction or retinoid transport. And SDD has a different clinical course for neovascularization, which I will follow up next. And an important thing to realize that SDD were misclassified as soft drusen or omitted altogether from five different grading systems based on color fundus photography. And these grading systems are the basis of population estimates and the genome genome-wide association studies. But we do know about SDD in Jerusalem and their role in type 3 neovascularization, which is also called retinal angiomatous proliferation. Type 3 neovascularization is associated with SDD presence in a very high proportion of eyes, shown in many studies, but also Jerusalem are present. Type 1 neovascularization in drusen, since I just showed you, involve an invasion of abnormal materials, deposits, cells, and fluids into the sub-RPE basal laminar space. So we can hypothesize that SDD and intra- or subretinal neovascularization involve invasion of abnormal materials into the subretinal space. This is a direct clinical pathologic correlation of treated type 3 neovascularization in an eye that also had SDD. An 86-year-old woman presented with a pigment epithelial detachment associated with intraretinal cysts and hyperreflective foci and received intravitreal bevacizumab. By the second visit, the PED uh, disappeared, leaving uh, drusen, and the hyperreflective foci remained. There were six injections. The patient died a few months later and became an eye donor. Thanks to eye tracking, we could see the neovascularization in the, do in the donor eye. Above are the OCT scans, uh, and the orange arrows confirm SDD presence in this eye. We can track 
the interretinal uh, uh, vascular complex to where it implants into a gap in the basal laminar deposit. We can see all the involved cells, Mueller cells, RPE-derived cells in the sub-RPE basal laminar space, and along the stalk, And importantly, Brooks' membrane is intact, so there was no choroidal contribution to this neovascular complex, which is consistent with previous studies. We also saw cells um, that appeared to be macrophages. Having examined the, neuro, the neovascular part of A and D, what about the neurodegeneration? Geographic atrophy is described by the SARCs, in their own words, at the edge of the depigmented area, the histological changes are constant. The RPE often ended in a group of proliferative cells. The photoreceptors showed progressive degeneration as they approached the atrophic area in which they disappeared. And the external limiting membrane, the ELM, ended in a curved line and the outer nuclear layer also disappeared. What is the ELM? This is, these are junctions between the Mueller cells and the photoreceptors. In it, shown here by electron microscopy. And in, in an, in an on-fos view, the Mueller cells form a Swiss cheese, and the rods and the cones poke through the holes of the cheese. Mueller cells are usually vertical, or in the macular, they're Z-shaped. But here, I'm going to show cells that express glial fibrillary acidic acid, uh, indicating that they're gliotic and not performing their usual functions. Research by us and Michelle Madigan and her group showed that the curved line was a GFAC positive Mueller cells that are now bent horizontally. We called this landmark the ELM descent, and we used it to analyze the mechanisms of GA that might be visible by OCT. We used high-resolution histology of 13 eyes, and on either side of the ELM descent, shown by the red line, we annotated RPE morphology and measured the thicknesses 500 and 100 microns away using unbiased sampling methods uh, to assess both progression and clearing. And we did a similar analysis for both geographic atrophy and neovascular A and D to look at the RPE. In doing so, we assessed um, the fate of RPE cells, uh, which are central to A and D deposit formation and neovascularization using high-resolution histology. We identified 15 morphologic phenotypes ranging from normal to here to atrophic uh, without any basal laminar deposit here. We saw cells scattered across the atrophic zones, we saw cells shedding parts of themselves, cells leaving the layer anteriorly and migrating into the retina found cells that we called subducted that were diving under the RPE layer to crawl along Brooks' membrane. Using this approach, then, we quantified the progressive dysmorphia, or worsening of cell shape near the ELM descent, which resulted in a 20% thickening of the RPE plus basal laminar deposit layer. It's possible that this thickening could be quantified in OCT. It also can impact on clinical autofluorescence imaging, as shown in the next slide. In geographic atrophy of AMD, the RPE dies and autofluorescence disappears. The border is often hyperautofluorescent. Our histology of 10 GIs whose edges were sampled in an unbiased manner shows enlarged, stacked, 
and layered cells and autofluorescent material in the underlying deposits and overlying retina. This dysmorphia explained the higher uh, autofluorescent signal, and we can see the RPE dysmorphia by SDOC2. Importantly, we learned from these studies of histology and clinical imaging how RPE dies off the top of drusen. Remarkably, we saw many of the same 15 histologic phenotypes in excellent structural OCT images. My clinical collaborators have eight years of eye-tracked OCT, meaning that the behavior of single cells can be watched for accurate natural heat. Importantly, we learned how RPE die off the top of drusen. PED volume uh, shows how drusen grows slowly over months, consistent with the cell culture model I just showed you, and then it, it collapses quickly. The B scans uh, show that the RPE on the top either die or migrate into the retina. Then the druse uh, collapses, leaving atrophy and hypertransmission. Because we know from the cell culture study that the RPE can make deposit, we can conclude that the druse flattens because the RPE is not there to make the druse components. And when the RPE dies, so go the photoceptors. Here is another route to atrophy that we call the plateau, which is the dis disappearance of the RPE and the persistence of a basal laminar deposit line across the atrophic area. At the top are drusenoid PEDs indicated by the thick RPE basal laminar band. At four years, the RPE basal laminar band thins, and a mildly reflective line remains. A close-up shows those hyperreflective spots leaving the layer in association with the hypertransmission below. Below the line of basal laminar deposit, there is reflectivity that we think represents Mueller cell activity. And we call this the plateau. Why do these cells migrate into the retina? Well, one idea um, we can see from this clinical pathologic correlation of type 3 neovascularization, um, we can see that they're hyperreflective foci that can be accounted for by two cell types. Fully pigmented RPE uh, can migrate into the retina and then uh, right up to a capillary, suggesting that it is seeking oxygen, consistent with modeling studies um, indicating uh, reduced levels of oxygen at the top of a large druse. Here is a lipid-filled cell uh, that we think is a micro, of microglial origin scavenging extracellular lipids from this exudation. To continue along the layers, what is happening to the quarry capillaris? Well, um, the membrane attack complex accumulates and UEA1 lectin binding disappears indicating that the corocapillary endothelium disappears. Loss of corocapillaris um, um, occurs in conjunction with drusen load, and that be is because there are more of these ghost vessels, um, spaces uh, between in Bro uh, below Brooks membrane where vessels had occupied. And I will show you these in, in uh, another slide. Also, um, here is loss of the specific marker CD34 before the vessel itself disappears. So this is non-functional endothelium. Jerry Luddy and Joanna Seddon, using lectin binding and laser confocal microscopy in clinically characterized eyes, showed changes of the choriocapillaris in geographic atrophy. In the center of the atrophy, there was 50% loss of vasculature in the submacular choroid. The percent vascular area was uh, about 38% um, uh, in the atrophy, compared with over 80% outside the atrophy. 
and the remaining capillaries in the atrophic region were highly constricted. Brooks' membrane, when it is normal, can be thought of as a Roman arch bridge. And here is normal Brooks' membrane. Here are endothelial cells that have retracted from the arches. Here are the ghosts, uh, like what I've just shown, with cells in it, phagocytes uh, clearing the debris. And finally, um, here is depillared Brooks' membrane. Um, so the, the bridge uh, has now lost its stanchions. Um, apparently, the, uh, the corticapillaris endothelium is required to maintain the outer collagenous layer, which is now missing. And then across the border of uh, geographic atrophy, the EOM descent, uh, we can see that Brooks' membrane, the three-layer Brooks, thins, and choriocapillary density declines, but is not zero. The smooth transition in the, um, RP, in the Brooks membrane choriocapillaris complex um, looks like the age-related disease, and it contrasts with the relatively sharp border of RPE loss and ELM dis delimited photoreceptor atrophy, suggesting a threshold event in the neurosensory retina served by the choriocapillaris. Finally, I will end on um, the phenomenon called outer retinal tubulation, which is a, a gliosis and remodeling in the neurosensory retina. In 2009, Bailey Freund, Rick Spade, and their fellows described ORT. These are circular, ovoid, outer nuclear layer features with hyperreflective borders. They are distinct uh, from cysts in the inner nuclear layer, which is an important clinical observation. Um, they were long-lasting and non-responsive to anti-VEGF, so they didn't need to be treated. And it was thought that these were scrolled up photoreceptors. Direct clinical pathologic correlation Let's us see ORT in the same patient in vivo and uh, in ex vivo in histology in the laboratory, confirming directly that this circular structure accounts for ORT appearance. Twenty years ago, my lab showed that these uh, also that contained all, almost all cones and in interleaved Mueller cells using carbonic anhydrase histochemistry. In normal uh, outer retina, we see photoreceptor nuclei in the ONL. There are inner fibers in the Henle fiber layer. There are inner segments and outer segments, and the contacts they make with the Mueller cells at the external limiting membrane. In this ORT, we see a circle of ELM radially pointing cone photoreceptors. Most of the cones lack outer segments. The RPE layer is absent but individual pigmented cells may float through the lumen, like the one at the red arrow. Here's the ELM strictly. Outer retinal tubulation is a finger-like invagination of the subretinal space, and it's lined by the ELM, shown by this mesh glove, and by the actin cytoskeletons of the ORT cells. In this atrophy, due to pattern dystrophy, we see that as the atrophy grows, ORT uh, outlines its perimeter uh, the entire time. Uh, so the, the, the ORT is growing, and the perimeter to which, is, to which it is continuous is growing. So the Mueller cells appear to be scrolling up the retina like a window shade in advance of the atrophy. We believe this is to protect the surviving photoreceptors or to sequester toxic debris inside the GA zone or both. Uh, reactive gliosis is present throughout the atrophic area of geographic atrophy. Here is an ELM descent uh, where Mueller cell processes reposition outwardly, extend horizontally, and replace the ELM with a glial seal. Uh, the Mueller cells also help clear debris from Brooks' membrane.
So, in conclusion, AMD is a vascular metabolic disease in which extracellular deposits, soft drusen and subretinal drusenoid deposits, increase risk for progression to atrophy and neovascularization. In the RPE Brooks membrane complex, AMD involves an atherosclerosis-like progression instigated by lipid recycling pathways serving retinal physiology. A timeline of AMD progression is visible through histologically validated clinical imaging. I would like to acknowledge my grant support, my financial disclosures, and I'd like to acknowledge the many contributions of, of my laboratory and colleagues, and particularly my clinical collaborators at Vitreous Retina Macular of New York, Rick Spade, Bailey Point, Larry Anutzi. And thank you for your attention.